Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to yet another episode of creating our 2D fighting game in Unreal Engine 4. My name's Waza and I've been taking you for all these amazing tutorials so far. Thank you so much for the amount of feedback I'm getting for this guys. It's absolutely insane and I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the series. Um, today's episode we're going to look at setting up the camera. Now this is quite a tricky episode. I'm not too sure if I'm going to cut it into two parts or if I'm going to keep it into one part. It just depends on how much time we've got. Um, and how long this is going to take. So without me yabbering on, let's just get started. So as you previously know, we've been looking at just setting up the target points and the spawn points of where the characters are going to be with inside the, with inside the level. So what we're going to do in this session is we're going to look at how do we get the camera to work so that if the characters separated from each other, it would either zoom out or move with the, with the characters. Now this is quite a tricky thing to understand and how to get it to work. Because normally the camera is attached to the character, um, but now we've got an independent camera. So this guy here, he's just um, hovering in its own place. We need to make him move depending on where the characters are within the map. And this is going to rely on a few things that we're going to look at. And also it's going to require some math. So hopefully you guys can stick with me um, with this episode. I don't know why we keep getting this, but we'll get rid of that. So first things first. What we need to look at is how do we get this to work? Well, one, we need to find out where character one is. We also need to find out where character two is, and we need to find the distance between them. And that way we can then set up the camera to pan with that character or with both of them so we can find out exactly where they are. So to do this, we're going to do it in our level blueprint. So just make sure we open this up. And in this instance, we're not going to go off the event begin play like we have been in all the other lessons. This time we're going to do this on an event tick because we want the camera to update on a regular basis. So we're just going to throw an event tick into our scene. Now we've got some values that we already need. For example, character one and character two. We can find out exactly where they are um, on the level. And it just, as I say, just requires a little bit of math um, and how we get that to work. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to get the camera. So if you just click on the camera, go back to our example map and just put the camera in. That way we can get access to our camera and we can tell the camera to do something with inside the level. But what we want to find out first is we want to get it, its location. So we want to find out exactly where the location of this camera is. So we can just say get actor location. So we want to just find out where he is. And basically we want to break this down. So we want to break the vector down. Because we only want to use certain values out of the X, Y, and Z, hence it being 2D, we've got to kind of restrict how much we want to get from that. We also need to find out information about the character, exactly the same principle of how we've done with the camera. So we're going to do the same with the character one. So we're going to get him and we're also going to get character two. So we're going to get both of them. And we can pretty much just copy these. So control C, control V. Um, so we're just going to copy them and we're just going to plug those in. So we're just doing exactly the same process of what we're doing with the actors. So uh, with the camera, getting the location, we're going to do exactly the same with the characters very important because we need to find out the exact locations of where these guys are. Now what we're going to need at the end of this event tick is we need to actually set the location of this of the camera. So we're going to drag off here and we're just going to say set actor at location. Now I'm not too sure if it's going to come up. We probably need to turn that off which we have to do. We're just going to set the actor at location and every tick this is going to set our actor to a certain point within inside our current map. Now it's very easy to do this but it, as I say it does require a little bit of math. So first of all we need to find out the positioning of the two characters within the x-axis. Just move this out of the way. So obviously we're working off um, the x. So we just want to find out exactly where they are on, on the map. And to do this, we're just going to do a little bit of math. So we're going to say plus. We're going to float by float. Sorry, turn that back on. So we're going to float by float. And we're going to plus those two values together. And I can show you why we're going to do this. So if I just had to do an event tick, I'm just going to print a string. So we'll just do it off here. Um, actually, no. We'll just unconnect that just quickly. And we'll just throw a print string just so I can show you some information. So if I just print string out of here, okay, if compile. And if I had to play, You'll see a lot of values coming down the left hand side. That's fine. You can see currently it's set to 480. If I move the character, you can see the values start to change. So it goes from uh, 480 and depending where my character moves away from character 2. So here's player 1 on the left and obviously player 2, he can't move yet, but that's fine for now. 
you can see the value changes and this is going to be important to us when we start working with the camera okay but we're going to do a little bit more a little bit more of a little bit more of math sorry my tongue's going crazy but we're actually going to divide those values it's going to divide them now this is all dependent on how you want this to work okay now this is going to pay a big part in finding out where the camera is going to be in this location so you can either slow it down or move it up depending on your division and i'll show you that in a second but before we do that we need to finish off this section so the camera actor and basically what we need to do is we just need to make a vector so we're just going to make a vector because we need the new information so we need this information here so we're going to make a vector and basically we're going to send y and z because honestly they don't really change so we're just going to keep those values as they are but our new x value for the camera is going to be orientated towards this value we put here so remember that number was changing consistently that's going to be our new value and then basically what we can do is we can plug that into our new location just like that so basically that's setting our camera to the new location of this value so hence the x value so it's taking all this information and the camera actors information and plugging it into the new location of where we want it to go so if we just plug this into here so the event tick will happen and obviously it'll set our actor location we also need a target that target is pretty straightforward it's just going to be our camera actor because that's what we want to move so we're just going to get that i'm going to plug that in so if i compile and play you'll notice the camera is ni nice and fitting with the character if i start to move my character you can see that the camera starts to follow my character wherever he's walking however we do have an issue as you can see that if i move so far out of the screen obviously they'll disappear and the camera just can't keep up with it and that's because the camera's current zoom level is kind of restricted i mean you could block it up and say okay that's how much i want i don't want them to move any more than that so just keep it at that value so you don't really want them to go further than that but that's kind of limited i think but i suppose it depends on your style of game and obviously one when, when you go closer it's still the same type of camera again this all varies guys this is your game you want to make i'm just giving you the fundamentals of how you want to how, how you want to build it so what i'm going to show you next is how do we get the camera to pan in and out depending on where the character moves and this is a little bit more trickier than the other one because basically we have to find out information about the camera and its components now if you been using unreal you'll notice that the camera has a component here and this is called field of view now depending on where you change that value of the field of view will depend on how much the camera zooms in and how much that camera zooms out but we can do exactly the same principle of what we did with the with the movement of the camera with the same with the field of view but again with a little bit of math so let's just get on with it so what we can actually do is we can steal this because we've already done it so we might as well just duplicate it i mean you could have set it as a variable and then use the variable um but just for convenience sakes and obviously levels of people on this channel we'll just copy it across but instead of plusing the value this time we want to subtract the value now we have an issue is that these values are going to be slightly out so we have to swap them around so if i'd say this minus this so that minus that if we print so let's get a print string so i can just show you so we print string and we'll print the value here so let's compile and play you'll see that i have negative 320 and if i move it's still in a negative value you don't want that negativity because basically that negative the field of view can't go negative it can only be positive so we want to make sure that it stays as a positive value so all you got to do is just swap these two around so we're going to put that one at the bottom and this one on the top i mean you could swap these two rows if you want but i just like keeping it as it is now if i print that out compile and play you'll see now we have a positive value that we can use so now it's nice and easy so we can see the values of what's happening within the range so let's just delete those uh, actually we'll keep them but we'll just delete that so we might need a value now what we can do is we can get the camera component again so we can get the camera actor so we can paste that there and we're going to say well we want to get your components we're going to 
just drag off, I'm going to type in camera, oops, camera component. And if we go right down to the bottom, it should be at the bottom. So when I get the camera component, and basically what we want from the component is we want to get the field of view. So if we drag off here and say set field of view, not the function, but we just want the variable. And that's the variable that's attached to the, the camera component. So we want to set the field of view for the camera. Now, obviously, we don't want the print string here, so we're going to take that out and we're just going to drag this in. So we're setting the field of view. And if I just had to plug this in here and play the game now, you'll notice that it's not looking so good. We're upside down. It's not how we want to, but you can see the camera is panning in and out as we want it to happen. Right? So we can see that it is working. So we just need to add a little bit more logic. So all we're going to say here is we need to multiply this value. So we're just going to multiply the float. So like we did the division there, we're going to multiply this value. And I'm going to put this value at 0 0.15. Again, you guys can choose what you like. Um, obviously, but I'll show you the difference of values throughout the video. We've got some time. And if I had to plug that into the field of view, compile and play, you can see I'm up the right way around because I've multiplied um, the actual field of view distance. And if I start moving, you can see that multiply is holding the amount that I can zoom in and out. And also the camera there moves with the character. But you can see that it zooms in too much. That's pretty awful. We don't want it to be that close when you're playing. And you also don't want it to zoom all the way out there that you can't even see the map. So we can actually control this um, and we can make it more efficient for ourselves. And all we have to do is just add what's known as a clamp. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard of this, but it's just another node that we can pull off and it's called clamp. And we're going to clamp the float and we can choose a minimum and a maximum value that we want to clamp at. So the best way to do this is if we, um, let's just undo this and let's get our print string again. So just so I can show you what it looks like. So if I print out the value that we're getting in a return here, so compile and place, so this gives you an adjustment of, of how far you want to see and how far you don't. So you can see it's set to one. If I, oh, that's because it's coming out the clamp. Derp. Didn't want that to happen, sorry. Because it's set at zero and one. That's why it wasn't working. All right, so if we put that back in. Compile and play. You can see currently at that view angle, it's set at 48, as you can see printing off the side. The more I go out, so the more I leave, depends on, oh, I should have actually set it up into that into that section. But obviously, the more you leave, the, the higher that value goes. So we can choose the amount of value that we want that to, to hold between. So let's take this out. Let's put this back in again. So our value, we want to plug that into our field of view, and we want to plug that into here. Now, basically, we want to tell the clamp how much of a distance do we want. So in my instance, I could say, OK, I want 60 as a minimum and 120 as my maximum. So that's as far as I want to go. So if I compile and play, let's actually print this out so we can see what's going. So print and just plug that into here so we can see the value. And if we play, you can see it's set to 60. Now if I start moving, you can see that it starts to zoom out. And then once it hits 120, it stops. And once I start moving in, you can see it stops at 60. So it doesn't do that crazy zoom in that we wanted. And you can kind of control your camera the same thing applies with this multiply. If I decide to change these values, so say multiply by 0.25, obviously that's going to be a lot more quicker. So you see it's at 80 and you can see the camera changes very fast depending on how high that value is. So the higher the value, the quicker that's going to change. So if I kept that at 0 0.05, for example, compile and play, you'll see that it's a very slow reaction. See, I'm still at 60. And then it starts to change depending on how far it goes. So I can get more of an angle depending on how much I change that value. So I can go in and out and I can still kind of control the view, but this is all about personal preference and how you like this to happen. So let's take this print string out and let's just comment this. So this section here, if we just move it across a bit more, sorry, this is very messy. Normally I'm not this messy. So we'll comment this out and we're going to say controls, controls, the field of view. Oh, I was about that completely wrong. I do apologize. And obviously, we'll just take the event tick out a little bit. And then this one here, comment that out. We can say controls the camera 
movement. And that's pretty much it for, the, for this episode, is just how we control that camera and how we move it. So remember, it also, it's all dependent on how you change these values. It will depend on your outcome of your game. Now, some of you might get a bit confused because you might have built on a different axis. Just make sure you're on the right axis, otherwise you're going to come across a few problems when it comes to pretty much finalizing the rest of your, your camera settings and getting that to work correctly. So that pretty much brings us to the end of that episode. Uh, again, I want to thank you guys very much for joining me for these episodes. Hopefully you, you guys enjoyed that one and, and learned something new. I don't think so. I've ever seen this on YouTube, how you can control cameras um, by characters moving and things. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. And I do hope to see you in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it. If you really like my stuff, don't forget to subscribe. If you really, really like it, don't forget to share with your friends. And I want to thank you very much for all the support you guys are giving me. And yeah, I'm going to stop talking. Thanks very much, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.